Chapter 4, The Calling. Tenzin, are you sure you can't go with them? Mom, we'll be fine. Grandpa Ang and his friends were around our age when they traveled the world. I'm so with this grandkids adventure. I've only seen three episodes of this season. I can already think of so many spin-off series I would watch. I would totally watch the Korra Toph adventures. i definitely watch the Milo Janora Iki adventures for sure. So many good elements. We don't need your food! But I made your favorite tree. Sweet buns with happy faces on them? Ah, uh, this one is smudged. I can't eat this. You know, sometimes things get smudged in the wild. Milo's gonna eat the wild. The whole wild. He's gonna unite all the animals under his rule. Good luck, and be careful. Now let's move out, soldiers. <sighs> Pepper, yip yip. This is a big move for Tenzin, letting his kids go off like this. And Pema. Pokey and I are going to go into town and find out if anyone's seen Korra. You can hold the picture of Korra I drew. Wow! I didn't know you could draw. What the heck? It's amazing. You know a lot of things about me, <laughs> sister. Milo the man. Can I trust you? I guess so. I'm on a top secret mission to find the Avatar. Was that a pickup line? <laughs> what is this? How old is he? Cool. I'm Milo. <laughs> what should I call you other than beautiful? I was right. Ooh, Milo found a girlfriend. Stop ruining it. Looks like you gotta get back to your mission. Good luck, Milo. Yeah, you're not quite there yet. A for effort, though. Genora, oh, it's easy. the wall of the avatars. It's just a photo of Korra. Oh, her face. Oh, no. Yikes. Aang looks so happy and Korra looks, you know, yeah. Iggy, this is all your fault. What? I didn't do anything. Exactly. You need to start pulling your weight. That goes for you too, so-called leader. This kid's dangerous. It's kind of scary to think about Milo growing up. Like, he's walking such a fine line. If there ever was a third series of Avatar, you could imagine him being a villain. Or a hero. Like, he fits both. What's the plan for today? You're looking at it. We didn't do anything yesterday, or the day before that. Tell me the story about how you taught Aang to Earthbend. What's there to tell? I threw some rocks at the Avatar, he got all whiny, and Sokka fell in a hole. I thought there'd be more to it than that. No, it's basically what it was. I guess the only thing missing from that story is Katara. What about the time you guys took down the Fire Lord? Oh, yeah. It was hot. I was on a blimp. And I think a giant turtle showed up. If you're so antsy to do something, why don't you go and collect some mushrooms for dinner? I don't have a full understanding of that scene yet in the larger picture, but one thing I like about it is I love how Korra is so fixated on doing things the way she knows how, right? Like, let's train. And Toph looks like she's being lazy and just doesn't want to do anything. It's possible that in her way, this actually is what is necessary right now. Korra can train as hard as she wants and, you know, wake up every day just super invigorated to, to get going. But that doesn't necessarily guarantee she'll get what she wants. I heard a parable recently of two, two Buddhist monks or Zen monks or something, and they were both seeking enlightenment. One of them fasted and meditated and prayed and he just wanted to become enlightened so badly and the other just sort of lived his life and like got drunk and was promiscuous and somehow ended up attaining enlightenment. I've always liked the idea of there being many roads on the path. Maybe not to enlightenment but just to personal growth. You never know. Sometimes I think maybe one really important quality of growth is is just openness. It's our tendency to develop sort of tunnel vision towards what we're doing but there's always so much more out there. There's always so many other ways to be and to experience. So I like how Toph is kind of just being Toph. Like she's just being very fluid. Or maybe she's just being lazy. I don't know. I gotta wait and see. But something tells me Korra's task is not just to find mushrooms. Hey, where's all the food mom gave us? I threw it in the river. You did what? That food was supposed to last us two weeks. Hey, keep it down. I'm trying to meditate. Yeah, keep it down, Iki. I feel bad for Iki. She's like caught in the middle. Like just in terms of their leadership, she's under Janora. But Milo is such a powerful force, she's kind of caught in between the two of them. <laughs> yeah, let her all out. There you go. My name's Milo. I like to throw away food and fart in inappropriate moments. I'm Janora. I'm so above it all because I'm meditating. She's onto something. You chopped your breakfast! Oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's hilarious. I love how Iki's such an animal lover. Hold it right there. Tell us what you're doing in the Earth Empire. Are you spying? Oh, right. It's our first big mission. My dad Tenzin is counting on us. Can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> you're in a little bit over your head here. Do you know what that means? No, but try this macaroon. <laughs> if we capture these three airbender kids and bring them to Kovira. Oh, no, no, no. You're an idiot. Where did you get those? 
I found a whole sack of food down by the river. And with each delicious snack comes a lovely handwritten note. You're my handsome little man. I don't want to see them. I'd rather hang out here with you guys. What is this weird reverse Stockholm Syndrome? After dealing with Milo all day, you can handle anything. Oh, wow. Wow, such an awesome scene. I really love how they're using the villains of the past seasons to build a story for Korra like this. For Korra, it's the same thing again and again. And there's so much she has to deal with, so much she has to reconcile about herself and the world and seeing things in a way where she has purpose and her life has meaning. There is a place for her and she really is who she wants to be in all those things, you know? These things are so real too, you know? Like there are things that in the past have haunted me and it usually takes the form in my, in my mind of like a person or an event and it's easy to become really fixated on those those things. But I think those things just represent something that we haven't worked out yet. You know, like our bodies have a really good mechanism for pointing out danger to us. And a lot of times the dangers are things that we don't understand yet. It's weird how our minds just have a, a radar for knowing what we don't know and knowing how that poses a danger before we're even conscious of it. The way that that we try to communicate to ourselves is by, is by looking at those events or those things, that trauma, and throwing it at us again and again and again. And depending on how you interact with that will make a really really big difference in how intense it becomes or whether it you know it fades away but i think or at least i like to believe that in all those things there's there's a lesson and that's the that's the utility of it that's the beauty in it and i'm no expert on this but i think one possible way through that is just letting it in a little bit letting that hit you like okay that happened maybe my assumptions are not accurate but from here on out i can go forward and try to live better while reconciling those things accepting them as part of the experience and I think that's part of Cora's journey, right? Like, this is not something she can run from. It's something that's still literally inside of her in more ways than one. I can't put my finger on exactly what it is, but just the feeling of it is changing. Like, the feeling of her coming face to face with these things is a little bit different from the previous couple episodes. Maybe I'm projecting onto Cora, but I feel like it has a different tone. Like, she's actually going through it now in a way that's productive. Oh no, what did he eat? Are those the iro berries? Some. Don't eat the berries. We found some berries. <laughs> that was a solid endorsement by Milo. Give me 10,000 of those berries. Ah, oh, didn't need that. Looks like you got some bad berries. How do you know it was the berries? I ate too many of them because they're so, so delicious. <laughs> it seems pretty lonely out here. Where is everybody else? I don't want to talk about it. We're supposed to be looking for the Avatar together, but they won't even let me help. Well, that's not fair. Maybe we can help you out. Her power is too strong. Iki's goodness is just too powerful. What about this place? Well, that's the swamp. No one goes there. I know you're gonna find her. Now let's get you out of those ropes. Oh no, the timing. I like that guy, he's cool. The macaroon guy. Sorry my brother and sister knocked you out. Nice chatting with you. Let's bring the, bring the squirrel. Macaroon. <laughs> Macaroon guy will forever live in my heart. I had visions of all the times my enemies hurt me. Yeah, I figured something like that might happen. I thought so, too. I know you want to get better. And so does the swamp. It can sense you're out of balance. It'll teach you what you need to learn. If you're open to listening. Beautiful. Sounds like you're carrying around your former enemies. The same way you're still carrying around that metal poison. In the last airbender, Toph and I were always on the same page. I don't see why that should change now. There's a bigger meaning in the swamp will teach you what you need to know if you're open. The swamp is just life. All the information is there, I think, to lead a good life. Like, it's all there. I sometimes think, like, the model for, for human life is just structured in, in the environment. You know, it's just structured in the natural order of nature. Everything you do in the world creates some kind of ripple effect. And I don't mean that in, in an obscure, like, a butterfly flaps its wings way. I mean like in your immediate environment and in your own life, like what you do immediately has consequences. And so there's so much information at all times, but accepting that is way easier said than done because it requires a lot of personal sacrifice. Sacrificing the image you have of yourself and your outlook for the world and maybe some of your desires or maybe some of your habits or defense mechanisms that have been built to protect you. It takes a lot of work to strip down the inessential and to really be at a point where you're getting that feedback openly and without bias and without like an emotional reaction to, th to things. You know, but life is the best teacher. And I think that's part of what has always led me to gravitate towards trying to have as much experience as possible because you really find out who you are <laughs> 
at what the world is by venturing out. That's painful, but it's also a great thing because you know you can't really build from a place of lies. Like you, you should know exactly where you stand. And only when you try to really see things as they are that you can actually start to like try to constructively build on top of that. The problem was those guys were totally out of balance and they took their ideologies too far. Correct. You can't expect to deal with future enemies if you're still fighting the old ones. How am I supposed to move on? Boy, you avatars sure need a lot of hand-holding. Get up. We're going to the Banyan Grove tree. Wow, Pop, like, doing some eye roll work over here. The Banyan Grove tree. I remember I had mixed feelings about this when I first saw it. There is an enormous amount of spiritual activity here, but I don't feel Korra. Well, that's what we get for listening to Iki. I don't think we're going to find her here. Poor Iki. I mean, do more than a flyover. There you go. The swamp took care of things for you. Good. Hopefully they're here to take you home. <laughs> How do you really feel? Cora! No, but I don't want it to end yet. Let's do another couple episodes in the swamp. Janora sensed your energy, but we never would have been here if it weren't for Iki. Thank you, some recognition. I love your hair. Right? This is Milo, Janora, and Iki. Oh wow, Aang first meeting. And Katara's grandchildren. Your grandpa was a real pain in my butt. <laughs> the world needs you back. Seems a little premature. I'm not bending it out of you. Wow. That fight is over. Well done, Cora. Hell yeah. I feel so much lighter. I'd like to give you a hug now, if that's okay with you. Wow. It feels really good to see that. I love that Cora metal exorcism. It's a beautiful thing. No, don't leave Top behind. Take her. Take her. She needs to be. No. Finally, peace and quiet. I feel very sad thinking that might be the last time I see Toph. The level of thematic exploration in this season has just—it's like a new level. It's new heights. <laughs> It's articulated very poetically, but it, it feels real to me. It feels like actual experience. This season's blowing me away so far. Every episode I take forward is so much fun, but also painful because it's like one step closer to the end. I don't want this to end. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next week for episode five. <laughs>